Hey everybody and welcome to Bittner Built. Today I'm going to be focusing on the corner of the workshop, the dead zone. The zone of just not goodness, especially in my shop. So in one of my last videos, the small shop organization video, I briefly talked about the corners and I definitely pointed out how my corners are not done well over here. And so when you think about a small shop mentality, maybe you're somebody who has a two car garage like I do, or maybe you're somebody like a lot of my viewers over in Europe who's like, this is the size of my shop. I must fit 80 tools in six feet. Um, if you have that small space, you have to take the mentality of getting as much stuff in there as possible, but also as functional and well organized as possible. I mean, we could just throw it all in a bin, but that would be ridiculous. So let's take that into account and see, you know, what I can do with this space to definitely increase its usability because right now it's weak, it's weak. I'm gonna rip everything apart and while I have it apart, I'm gonna take the time to maybe go over a whole bunch of different options that maybe you could use in this specific corner. It might not be what I'm gonna choose for this build, but at least I wanna model some stuff up for you and give you some ideas in case you know that works into the design that you're thinking about for your space. So come along with me and let's rip apart this corner today on Bittner Built. So I'm going to try and point out a couple core things that I did wrong in these spaces that definitely doesn't work in hopes that, you know, you don't have the same problem. The first one is this little vise. And I had a big vise attached to my assembly table and it broke. And so I ran to the store that day because I needed it for something. And so I mounted this here and here it has remained ever since. And it was a horrible placement when I did it. And that's because, not even just because it's in the corner, it's in the middle of a very usable workspace. I have this much space now, if I wanted to stand here, so my body width, because of this. If this hadn't have been here, I could take one step over and I could have this much workspace in order to work with. Now it becomes a very comfortable workspace that I can do lots of things on if I need to. This becomes a space that I can take things that need to dry and put them over here. Or during assembly thing, just so many other ways. And this ruins it. So don't have something that is placed in the middle of your space. It creates artificial constrictions on what you can do in it. I have fallen into the obsession that many other people have fallen into is when you have some sort of wall mounting system, whether it be a pegboard or French cleat or something else, you end up putting everything on the walls. Every time you buy a new tool, you're like, I need to build a holder for that. And it goes up on the wall. And then at a certain point, you have to stand back and say, well, this is ridiculous. <laughs> um, when I buy a polishing set for my son's rock collection, it does not need a holder to go on the wall. When I buy a small little iron for my edge banding, oh, this does not need to go on the wall, but it has a holder, it's stupid. <laughs> I mean, should we bronze this guy and hold it up and so that everybody can see it when they come in? No, um, I got carried away. And so a lot of this stuff in the corner is where the stupid stuff that I made holders for has gone to live. And so it shouldn't be here at all. So I'm going to remove a lot of this stuff out of the corner. Some of it will be relocated somewhere else, but a lot of this stuff's going in drawers or bins or something because it's silly to be taking up this wall space. What could go in this corner then for me is maybe some corner cabinetry that's better uh, uh, suited for the space, or maybe it completely opens up the space for you so that you can do stuff like putting wood storage or carts or all sorts of other stuff that we're gonna explore later in the video. Another mistake that I made in the layout of this corner was this desk. I like having this desk here and I use it a lot. However, did I need the volume underneath to stay open for a stool to sit on? The answer is no. Um, a stool can be sitting out here in the open and I move it around because it's on casters all the time. I'd much rather utilize this huge volume of space for storage. And so we're gonna figure out some creative ways to use that. I also have regretted many times over the years that I did not make this desk come out as far as my miter station right behind me. And it was an opportunity missed, maybe let's, say it that way. By bringing this out just a couple more inches, 
it will match up with my miter station and give me another five feet of board support if I have a really long board at the miter station. I'm obviously not going to continue the fence on here, but just having this table that the board can sit on is valuable. So that's something that I'm going to change. And of course, the white Albatross air conditioner that was poorly placed when I was building everything out. Uh, I really regret having a big six inch hole in the side of my house for this vent because it's going to get moved. So it's taking up a primo space right in the middle of the wall. The middle of the, the wall is the best space to have for working. So killing it with this was a mistake. So we're going to have to figure out some new place for that. I have a pretty good idea of what I'm going to do to this space, but there are still some questions that I haven't figured out yet. So really one of the best things to do is just clear out the space and then hopefully those solutions will come to me as I start building everything. So let's clean this up. Okay, I've cleaned out the space. Let's go ahead and try some options that might work for this corner for you. So the first option might be a multiple cart system and ignore the fact that these are different sizes and stuff. I just wanted to use it for an example. But what you could do is have two or three carts in your corners. So you could have a cart here, a cart here, and a cart here. Casters make the world go round in a shop. So uh, casters bring flexibility. So this could be an option where maybe you have your drill press mounted on top of that and you have another big tool mounted on top of this. And so when you need to get to that one, you would just roll this one out of the way to be able to pull this one out and get access to it. Next would be to put a very large tool in this corner, either on casters or permanently mounted. Unfortunately, my, my new joiner is just way too big, so I can't even fit it in here. But my old joiner that I had definitely would have fit in this space. And so that one, again, a cart-based solution would have been able to be pulled out when needed to be used and then put back in that corner for the rest of the time when I didn't have a use for it. Now, a big tool that you could permanently mount over here, then the thought process would have to be that you have to be able to have good workflow around it. So then you would be required to have a cart right here or another big unit on casters that you could roll away to have full length uh, access to that tool that's in the corner. That one I think is probably the least likely solution. I would say if you are going to put any sort of big thing in the corner, you'd want it on casters. Next idea would be to do your vertical wood storage in this corner. Now, um, I wish I didn't have this for this example, otherwise I would put full big pieces in here. So I just grabbed some short stuff just to, to visualize it. Um, if you're gonna be doing vertical storage in here. Number one, you always need to cover the floor because wood should not be touching concrete even if it's sealed like this. Uh, it will cause your, your board to warp. So make sure you make some sort of plywood platform. I have another area in my shop that I do this where I just put two by fours underneath and then plywood on top just to hold it. Now as with all wood storage, you want it to be as flat as possible. So with vertical wood storage, you want it to be standing as straight up as possible. Now some people I've seen use a clamp to support it so that the wood doesn't fall. I actually find this to be a dangerous method because if you aren't thinking about it and you take your clamp away, the wood falls towards you. So. Uh, a good way is to, if this was my storage space, to add uh, another piece of plywood at a very, very, very slight incline so everything can sit flat against that and stack. Um, another thing would be dividers on these. You could easily just make some wooden dividers. It makes it easier to sort and take out the stuff as you need it. Or you can use something like my Bora wood rack that I have on my wall that holds my wood vertically, you can just turn one of those sideways and now you have this nice metal rack that holds your wood uh, in bins and nicely divide it. Of course dust collectors are phenomenal things to go in the corner because they never move unless you're having to empty them out and they're really like a three foot by three foot item which is perfect for this square area over here. Of course, another thing that's very similar to this would be like a large stand-up air compressor, or even if you have a pancake compressor, you could put shelves and put large things like that. Items that typically are going to stay put inside this shop and have hoses coming off of them, you could place them up here and then put a hose reel right next to it. That way, 
you know, you're pulling from it, but it's easily accessible for you to be able to bleed that compressor when it's not in use. So for some of you that might be working in a really, really tight space, so like one of those people that have a 10 by 10 shed that they're working out of, and every little spot that you can have to work on is critical. One idea would even be to mount a countertop next to your corner that's on a hinge system so you can put it up when you need to be able to access the tool or something that's right there and then bring it back down again when it's not. Now, you might have stuff on the wall here, so what you would probably do is offset the hinge by a few inches so that it hinges out here instead of against the wall. And then when it goes up, you could attach it some way so that it holds it up while you're in that space. So those were my ideas for usage in the corner here. I would love to hear if you have some good ideas so that we can share it with our community here. And if you do, you shall be rewarded. Uh, today I'm gonna do a giveaway in this video. So uh, in the next week, so today's the 11th, but I'm sure I won't finish this video for a few days. So whenever I publish this video, a week later, I'm gonna select two people who comment about something that you could put in the corner and you're going to win a free Bitfix. Uh, I'm not sponsored by Bitfix or anything. I just love this thing. I've been using it for years on all of my tools and it's the best magnet I've ever had. So if you'd like your chance to win a Bitfix, give your idea for a corner. If you don't have an idea for a corner, talk about the cool build that you're doing right now or a build that you really wanna do. Share some ideas, that's what I want. And uh, in a week, I will pull two winners and send you out a Bitfix. Now, time for me to build this out. Let's see what I came up with. Looking at what I've done in my corner, I had to work with what I had to deal with and I also had to work with my workflow. So my decisions might be different than yours, but uh, all of this is still way under construction and it's going to be finished in other videos. I'm gonna be making the laser engraver enclosure. I'm gonna be making uh, this my hand tool holder, which everybody comments all the time they want plans for. I'm gonna make a giant version that goes all the way down to those scissors with all sorts of different types of compartments and stuff that we can put in it because I love this thing. A lot of that stuff that we took off the wall will be going in here. And so it's still highly accessible, but it doesn't need that like pride of place type of thing, right? So over in the corner, we now have moved the garbage can to this side. This is holding up part of the counter here. And then a big thing that I've done is I've lowered this accessory cart. This cart was about two inches taller. And so it didn't give a flow with the countertops. So now when I remove a tool from there, it is one solid countertop going all the way around. So I really like that. I've cut this out at a degree so that uh, instead of boxing it in when I'm over in that corner, it gives me a lot more freedom of movement. It really gives me a large space to move around in, so I'm happy about that. I did take the big giant Albatross air conditioner and moved it over into the corner. So we're gonna look at that a little bit more. I really wish I could have put it up high, um, completely out of view of this shot right now. Somebody had suggested that in one of my comments and they're right. I wish I could do that. It would make it more effective. It would suck in the hot air up there and blow it out as cold air where down here we're sucking in coldish warm air and putting out cold air. So it would have been better up there, but unfortunately I couldn't do that. This thing requires me to empty out a water cistern in there every once in a while. It also leaks a little bit. So it was just gonna be too much of a pain to put it up. So he has taken over the corner, but I've tried to make the corner as accessible as possible. Let's take a look. So before, if you remember, I had a whole bunch of scrap storage over here and then I had some random stuff down on the bottom. What I've decided to do here is give this guy a home because it is always just wandering around and actually has nowhere to go. So my portable battery operated uh, shop vac goes over here. My car jack goes over here. And then when we look at the air conditioner, it is set back because of this unit. I need to be able to roll it out. But it would have blown and the air would have gotten stuck behind here. So what I did was I took some hard board and put it at a diagonal. So any air that comes out of here gets flushed out uh, as well as I put another piece over here just to keep it flat. And so I really feel all of the airflow out of here. 
if it was a necessity where like it's a really, really hot day and this just isn't cutting it, I still can pull this out and maybe move it a little bit closer to where I'm working, which I like to do sometimes. The big thing with this is you might look at this space and say, Justin, this does not look good and this does not do much. The problem is this air conditioner sucks in all of its air from this back side. And so originally I was going to build your typical cabinet carcass over here and make it look nice and trim it out. And then I was like, well, that's going to kill the airflow for this thing. It's going to be very limited in its airflow. And so it's important for me to keep this guy running well. And so I needed to leave it open. So we just went with the open, hey, here's a shelf look. Uh, but it at least allows airflow directly over to the unit. Now I still wanted to maximize the space back here. I didn't want to leave any space unutilized. So when I pull this card out, I still have to leave the bottom here for the air venting and I didn't want to have anything touching that because it actually gets surprisingly hot, believe it or not. And so that also influenced what I was storing back here. I'd, originally I thought, let me put like some paint cans and stuff that I don't use that much. And then it dawned on me that since this is hot, while it might not, it's not going to catch fire or anything, that added heat would dry out those paint products. So a good mode of thought that I had for products that go back here. When I had scrap back here, random items, I would never think to look back for those random items because there were too many items that I could not identify. Whereas now I have put all of my pocket hole um, screw large storage stuff and I have the trash bags for when I empty out my 55 gallon um, dust collector barrel. So giant garbage bags. And so these are two very specific things and when I need them, I will know where they are, but I only need them once a month or every few months in the case of these big guys. So um, they're a great product to put here because I will not forget what is here like I did with the scrap storage. The last thing that I decided to do was my French cleat corner shelving. This was not the plan. The plan was to make your typical carcass corner cabinet unit, the boring thing. But it's really what I had felt would have been the best use of the space. But then when I was thinking about it, I'm like, well, if I just throw shelves in here, it's exactly what the corner carcass would have been, just with a lot less wood and a lot less time to build it. And guess what? It's super strong. I don't have to worry about it. I can put really heavy stuff on these guys. It's very, very secure. So I made a separate video for these. You can check it out on my channel. I'll link it down in the description if you want to see how to make one of these. It's super simple, takes half an hour. And I even show in the video how to make a locking mechanism for your French cleats. And it only takes about two minutes and it's super effective. You'll never be able to move one of your French cleats again with that lock. And I also show how to do edge banding because uh, I was actually surprised a lot of comments came in that they didn't know how to do edge banding or they hadn't seen it done. So I do a good description on how to add edge banding here. Since this was like pointing in my face, I didn't want it to be plywood. So edge banding kind of gives it a, a nicer look to it. So this was my small shop organization video. I hope you got some good ideas out of it for implementation in your own shop. Obviously this air conditioner is my problem and that's what I had to design around, but maybe some of the other things that we went over will be helpful to you. Now, I hope that a whole bunch of you are gonna take advantage of my little giveaway and put down in the comments what you think could go in that corner. I really hope there's a whole bunch of ideas that I didn't think of. So somebody who's watching this video and is trying to figure out what to do with their shop, make sure you're reading down in those comments. I hope there's gonna be a whole bunch of gems down there for you that you'll be able to utilize yourself. Now, there's gonna be a whole bunch of other videos in my small shop organization series. Uh, this is the third in the series and I'm gonna be doing more as I work down this way. The idea of this series isn't to say that I have a smaller shop than you. Um, there's tons of people who have a smaller space than me. It's more, if you have a confined space, approaching it with the mindset that you need to get 
as much stuff into this confined space as possible, laid out as effectively as possible. Maybe it's multi-function so that you can do stuff. Maybe it's all on casters, but the idea is to make the best use of a limited amount of space so that you can have a really functional shop for yourself. Especially for me right now, I know I have a bigger space than a lot of people, but the engraver that I just caught requires a three foot by three foot by three foot enclosure. And that's huge in my space and I have nowhere to put it. Anywhere that I put it required me to get rid of something. And so that's really what prompted this whole redo of this corner so that I could get it down here uh, and out of the way. But you know, any other big tool that I wanna get right now, I don't know where it would go. And I really, really want a barrel sander really, really bad. So that's a problem that I'm gonna have to deal with in another video. Remember, like, subscribe, and comment down and below for our giveaway. Stay safe in the shop, and I'll see you in the next video.